Okay, uh, this video uh, is kind of a down and dirty video. It's the type of video I usually do for my members only. I have a members only playlist and if you become a member of the channel you have access to all the videos on that playlist plus all of the members only videos that I put out. Uh, though they're usually uh, things that have to do with the history of camping gear but don't quite fit into the narrative I'm trying to weave from 1890 to 1990. It's extra stuff, stuff I may have covered in another video, but I go a little bit more in depth. Neat stuff that I have found that I have bought from my collection, and sometimes there's bloopers and uh, uh, other mistakes. I know it's hard to admit, I make mistakes on occasion on the video. Who knew? But, I'm, I, I, I'm not doing this to show you the kind of member videos I'm doing. I'm just mentioning that this is the kind of thing. The reason why I'm doing this video, I had originally intended to do this as a members only video. But, I had uh, mentioned that I had bought this Trapper Nelson pack uh, on the Bannerman's Camp Facebook page. And it turned out another member there had been watching it on eBay. And uh, he, he wasn't going to buy it. He was just keeping an eye on it. And I went in and just snatched it right up. Because it is a nifty thing. I'm going to do some close-ups here in a bit. I'm going to do the kind of videography I don't like doing, which is holding my hand up, my handheld camera. But it doesn't work well with the tripod and the setup here in the office. Now, the reason why I went looking for another Trapper Nelson pack, this is the one I... I I have had for a good long while. This is the one that is in the video I did on the Trapper Nelson pack. Trapper Nelson pack is probably the second most substantial backpack invention in the 20th century and it led directly to the most substantial backpacking uh, design of the 20th century. There will be a video on that in a couple of weeks. But in order to do that video I've got to make a minor modification to this. It's a non-destructive modification, but I wanted to be able to show two packs side by side. I bought this. What I love about this is this is actually the kind of piece that I love to collect. Uh, first off, uh, there's not a lot of people out there collecting <clears throat> old camping gear. Uh, if, if you've got a collecting bug, and it's, it's an itch you need to scratch. Uh, old camping gear is, is a pretty good uh, thing to do because it's not as expensive as, say, like military or bottles or, you know, depression glass, that kind of thing. But not too many people are out there looking for old camping gear, with the exception of stuff from the 60s and 70s. And that's because old guys like me are trying to buy back their youth by getting a hold of the things that they either had when they were younger or couldn't afford and can't afford now. What this thing is, this is, this is a piece that shows me not only, it's not only a thing, it's not only an example of, of, of a type. You get to know a little bit about the person who owned this. And you'll see here in, the, in, in a minute. Uh, this was on the back of a Boy Scout in the Pacific Northwest about 90 years ago. Let's take a look at it. Okay, a bit more of this uh, kind of video that I hate, which is the handheld stuff, but this is the closest I can get to it with uh, my handheld camera. Uh, without using the big camera. This is what's written on the back of this Trapper Nelson pack. Uh, this tremendously helps us date this thing. 
Silver Peak, 1932. Mount Anderson, 1931. Uh... Silver Peak again in 1933, three pass in 1933, three pass in 1934. Diablo Dam, 1931, Humpback Ridge, which is near Silver Peak, uh, in 1935. Uh, District Encampment at Seward Park, 1935 in June. Pacific Northwest Regional Camperal, 1935 June. Sitcom Kalawa River, 1935. Hayden Pass, 9, August 1935. Stampede Lookout, 1935. Okay, this kid went a lot of places between 1931 and 1935. So that pretty much dates this. Now, it has seen some use. The first thing is, this is where the strap normally attaches to the, to the back of the pack. I'll show you here on this other one. You can see how that is attached with those little leather rosettes. Okay. Well, this thing has been used a lot. And the strap fell off, and what he did was is he tied a piece of clothesline to it, like so and then tied it off down to the buckle when he wanted to close it. And then he took some of the strap, a, a different strap, because this is much longer than the strap normally is, and he tied it down low instead of up high, but it would still work to the buckle. Now, the thing that solves a bit of the dating situation is this has a pocket with a snap flap, okay? And it does make sense because the first, uh, the, fir the, the first pack with a, hold on a second, let's back up. The first pack with a zipper on it was done by Jerry Cunningham in 1938. Now this doesn't have a logo tag on it, which is kind of a disappointment. Uh, because that would help us date other uh, Trapper Nelson packs. But there, it, it doesn't even look like there was one ever sewed on. So, uh, this is kind of a early one. The guy's name was Robert Stapp, Troop 15. And what I find interesting is this right here. The remnants of a sewn-on uh, strap pad. Okay, you can see it's kind of a kind of a felt, and I bet it has some kind of padding inside. Wonderful little piece. I love these. This stuff uh, that shows you a bit about the guy, the guy who owned it. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, it's also, like, like I said in, in, in that clip, uh, with the dates on here personalized by the, by the person who owned it, it we pretty much know there's, there's not a lot of scholarship uh, about old camping gear. Okay, you've got to do your own research, you've got to look at uh, uh, old catalogs, old magazines, that kind of thing, uh, in order to identify what it is you've got, the vintage and stuff like that. What's great about this one is, is uh, particularly with Trapper Nelson pack, it was in production from 1922 until the early 1970s. That's a 50-year production span where the design didn't change that much. Okay, And it's hard to nail down the exact vintage of any particular example you grab a hold of, uh, with the exception of the snap on the back. We know from our video on the, the beginning of World War II that Jerry Cunningham was the first guy to invent the zipper on a backpack in 1938. So if you've got a backpack and it's got a zipper and it's not a Jerry Cunningham backpack, it was made after 1938. So if you're not a member of the Bannerman's Camp uh, Facebook page, uh, go ahead and join. Uh, I, I, I won't turn you away unless you're a commie or a child molester or a 
commie child molester. If you molest commies, it's okay. All right? Uh, we're close to a thousand members now, and I, all, I generally post either the stuff I just bought or uh, stuff that I see, I've seen that's got a good price on it, including shipping. Uh, if you are interested in collecting old camping gear and you want to buy your first Trapper Nelson pack, don't pay more than about $150 total, including shipping. This cost me $132 total. Okay, I think that's great for a pack that's almost 100 years old, and it's iconic. All right, uh, first off, uh, you know, if you have been informed or entertained or educated at all by any of my videos, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. When you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification button, that little bell. If you want to become a member, Look down below the video and there will be a link to another video that shows you what it's all about. Okay, how you get access to the members only videos. It really, really, really helps me. Uh, in the past couple of months I've been able to buy a couple of small things that have made my video production life easier. This thing, this thing right here, if I can, this is a a, a remote switch that I can I can punch the button and it starts the camera, it starts recording, and I can uh, focus back and forth with the telephoto and the wide angle. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much this this little thing here helps, and and the members basically bought this for me, and it's only about twenty bucks. Uh, but now I don't have to stand up and go around to the back of the camera and fiddle with things and, and, and all that kind of thing. I can sit here and punch a button, start the video, and I can turn it off. And we're still, we've still got one more video uh, on the Hover X1 to do. I, I finally got the thing I need to finish that video. We will finish that before the end of the weekend. And then we're going to get back to the uh, post-World War II period and Jerry Cunningham's uh, contribution to it. In the meantime, we'll see you down the trail.